You're watching the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We need to start off by removing the SIM tray first. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. There are 15 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. On this plastic cover, there are numerous antenna lines on the borders, which are the light gray color lines, as well as the NFC antenna drawn in the center. On the back side, we can see a layer of graphite, which helps transfer heat. Once we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect it first. Now that the battery cable has been disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. Next, the front facing camera cable can be disconnected from the main board. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 64 megapixel main, a 5 megapixel depth, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and there's a secondary microphone on the top corner. And on the back side, there's a proximity sensor which is located on the top, and the graphene pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad is peeled off, we can see a thermal pad which sits on top of the processor. Here's a better look at the processor. Now the bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker. Now we can disconnect this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard and screen. If you needed to replace your screen, you would have to remove the back plate, as well as the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly, giving you access to the flex cables on the bottom, and then you disconnect those flex cables, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble your phone. Next, the flex cable for the fingerprint sensor needs to be disconnected, as well as the two other ends of the coaxial cable. There are two more Phillips screws on the bottom subboard that need to be removed. Now before we can lift up and remove the subboard, we need to lift up and peel off the flex cable for the screen. Taking a closer look at the subboard, there's a rubber gasket around the charger port, and the primary microphone is located right next to it. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back. The fingerprint sensor is held down with some adhesive, so if you needed to replace that, you could just gently pry it off. Now as far as the battery goes, there are no pull tops to help you pry it off, which isn't a surprise when it comes to Samsung. So we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery has been removed and the protective tape has been peeled off, we can see the copper heat pipe which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is the white sticker located underneath the SIM tray. There's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening on the frame as well as the microphone openings. And the flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here and held down with some adhesive. And there's also a rubber gasket from the inside of the power button and the volume keys to help prevent water or debris getting inside the phone. So if you need to replace those, you'd have to pry off the flex cable 
and lift up and pull out the metal bracket which is holding the keys in place. The top earpiece speaker is located here and it's also held on with some adhesive and it has those little white foam balls. And finally the vibrator motor is located here and that's also held on with some adhesive. For the repairability score I give this phone a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.